So let's talk a little bit about the Xiaomi 14 series that has been renounced in uh, China uh, just a few days ago. And uh, yeah, I want to talk just in general, because some people are claiming that this Xiaomi 14 sensor is getting worse than the previous sensor was that I'm filming here right now with the IMX 989 on the Xiaomi 13 series especially the Xiaomi 13 Pro and the Ultra. The normal Xiaomi 13 had, I think, an IMX 78, uh, 766 or 866, something like this, a uh, newer uh, sensor there uh, from the Xiaomi uh, collaboration with Sony. Um, nevertheless, the new sensor is an OV50H, a modified version of this one. And what I want to talk about right now is... Some people are claiming that this is worse because we have a smaller sensor size. But smaller sensor size not, does not always mean that the picture quality will get worse. It depends on the sensor. Just look at the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V that has a newly developed dual layer sensor that allows it to capture a little bit more light. Even though it is not a 1 inch type sensor, Sony decided to put it in their smartphones because it can handle the darkness a little bit better. And Xiaomi probably is going also the same kind of route here with this one because they're also doing this yeah, customized kind of sensor for capturing more light. So I think they're also having something similar like the dual layer stacked sensor there. But they also have something that is, which is very interesting and this is a very large aperture. On the Xiaomi 14 it's f1.6 which is like huge. It reminds me on of the Magic uh, 5 Pro that also has a very huge aperture and a very large sensor combined, which helps tremendously. And the Magic 5 Pro's main camera sensor can definitely compete with the IMX 989. That usually on this device you have, for example, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra that I'm recording here now with has f1.9, which is a lot smaller kind of aperture. And why is this so important? I have here, for example, the Nubia Z50S Pro that just is announced or was announced as well for the global market. And this one here has an f1.49 aperture, f1.59 f1 aperture, also almost f1.6, but a little bit under the f1.6 there. And this one here has an IMX 800. We know the IMX 800 from mid-range devices from last year already. It was first introduced, I think, with the Honor 70. And this one here performs a lot better than the Honor 70. I'm not sure what the Honor 70 has in had in terms of uh, aperture there. But this one combines the 35mm lens together with a very large opening. And this helps it to reduce the shutter speed. Uh, to actually make it faster, to reduce the blurriness actually by having a faster shutter speed that you can use and a lower ISO at the same time because of the large, larger opening and the light gathering abilities. The same kind of story that you saw with Huawei's P60 Pro and their advertisements for the telelens that said to be beating the telelens from the Oppo Find X6 Pro, for example, even though the Find X6 Pro has a larger sensor, we have a larger aperture on the P60 Pro, and this helps to gather a little bit more light and getting crispier, nicer shots out of there, especially also in dim lit situations. Thanks to more light gathering ability, we have less blur because we can use a faster shutter speed and can keep the ISO a bit lower, so less noise creeping in. And this is what you can also see here with the main camera sensor of the um, of the Nubia Z50S Pro here for sure. So I can show you some sample pictures here as well that I took with this one here in dim lit situations and it can definitely rival also the IMX 989 when it comes to those dim lit situations uh, thanks to a faster shutter speed, more light gathering abilities and a pretty large sensor. It's 1 over 1.49 inch actually. So it is a lot different than the new 1 over 1.3 inch that Xiaomi is using in the 14 series that is much, much closer to the 1 inch size sensor. And it's very close to the one that Sony is using for its uh, dual layer stacked sensor that can also compete with the 1 inch type sensors uh, in uh, most scenarios when it comes to dimness situations. 
And uh, Sony is still doing a little bit of a conservative way because if they have would have opened up the aperture even more or would have used the same kind of dual aperture or even variable aperture mode, then it would open up more uh, capabilities. Talking about the dual layer and talking about uh, aperture, the Xiaomi 14 Pro has an ace up its sleeve because this one will be using a dual, um, not a dual, a variable aperture, which is quite cool because this variable aperture allows you to go from f1.4, same as the newer Huawei devices, the Mate 60 Pro, P60 Pro, and so on. It allows you to open up the aperture even more, and this allows you to gather even more light than the normal Xiaomi 14. And this is, for low-light situations, even better, especially portrait shots that usually 35 mm works better with. But I would have wished Xiaomi also maybe putting another sensor in there that has 35 millimeters. It would be very cool for portraits as well. And then they could maybe leave the 3.2 times out there and jump to a 5 times optical zoom one, especially for the Pro version, for example. But uh, yeah, 5 times optical zoom. The portrait lens, the 35 millimeter, has to have lots and lots of megapixels, 50 megapixels at least. Then it would be possible to just use it via crop in, disable pixel binning for even uh, those uh, macro-like shots that you saw. Definitely a different perspective, but still you can get away with this one. Anyway, um, I'm very, very interested in the Xiaomi 14 series because I think they're really up to their game. They have also a new front-facing camera. Finally, I think we are talking 10 years already about the front-facing video that we need 4K, unlike the Nubia Z50s Pro that I have here in my hand, also doesn't have 4K on the front-facing camera. Oppo added it to the Find X6 Pro. However, it is non-stabilized. And Xiaomi now finally upping the game, coming to honors and uh, Huawei's uh, uh, level, basically, supporting not only 4K30, but 4K60 video recording on the front-facing camera, as far as I'm aware, even without any time cap, so even beating honor in this regard and then also offering better HDR than before. The only thing missing there would be like an autofocus mode eventually. The one that I really wish, because I'm looking at the Pixel 8 Pro right now and its autofocus capabilities on the front-facing camera, that usually is working fine. But if you don't need this autofocus, I really would like to have it uh, like some kind of hyperfocal kind of fixed focus mode where it just freezes the, the motor. And then when you're walking around and you're uh, moving towards the sun and the sun in the background or something like this, it would not like start focus hunting or going out of focus, which is one of the benefits and probably one of the reasons Huawei switched from the autofocus on the P series to the non-autofocus uh, camera on the front but yeah what is your opinion about the uh, Xiaomi 14 series write it down in the comments I'm pretty sure that because it's so close together in terms of camera setup the Xiaomi 14 is so close to the Xiaomi uh, 14 Pro right now it has basically the same camera setup the only thing that's different is this variable aperture that's only available on the 14 Pro that this year or next year when it will become global, the Xiaomi 14 might be the better buy. It is very, very cheap in comparison to the uh, 14 Pro. But at the same time, it offers you almost the same kind of camera quality. The only difference is really this variable aperture. And you only needed it probably in rare occasions where you probably also want to control it manually. Uh, then it might make a lot of sense to have a variable aperture. Otherwise, smaller kind of device. I like smaller devices, even though I'm like praising this device so much, it is a brick in my hand. And uh, yeah, a smaller device, 6.36 inches or something like this, reminds me a lot of my Huawei P30, where I really started to dig into those camera smartphones a little bit more. And um, yeah, it's, it's the perfect size, I would say for such a device, also with this nice rounded edges all over the place. So I'm very, very uh, looking forward for the Xiaomi 14 series to arrive here. So I have the possibility to also check it out against the 13 Ultra that I'm recording here with right now, but also the 13 Pro that I still have. 
So uh, I'm looking forward for the Xiaomi 14 and I'm surprised that they're really doing there's huge steps with the Xiaomi 12 S Ultra. We saw like a corporation, okay, they gained a lot of like software tricks here and there. They were still balancing it out. The 13 Pro definitely was a huge step forward. Also uh, starting the trend of uh, telemacro cameras. Yes, probably someone else had it before, but they're like reviving this. And others jumped on this as well, at least time-wise. Honor added something similar than uh, Huawei as well. And yeah, I like their Leica style as well. They redefined everything, made everything a little bit better now with the uh, Xiaomi 13 Ultra that I really, really like also for photography and their style. It's not the best camera in the world, but their styling, they added some something unique to the smartphone market that usually you had to buy cameras for and this is style uh, so the leica kind of camera is usually very expensive and it's not always the best in hdr not always the best in terms of noise that you can uh, reduce in terms of uh, uh, shadows that you can pull and such things but they managed to create photos with style and this is something that was missing on the smartphone market a little bit their google yeah pixel had its own style samsung had its own style which oh it's like ugly and um, very smartphone-like kind of style and I'm very happy that that uh, the corporation Xiaomi Leica is now giving us a Leica kind of smartphone style. It's not 100% true to what uh, Leica cameras usually do but it's very close and this is something that, that I really like there in this regard and others missed a little bit the opportunity to create their own kind of style. Sony for example um, has their own smartphone like Sony style where I think the normal Sony cameras even the ZV-1 for example entry-level vlogging kind of camera has a slightly different kind of style than what Sony is producing and showing us with the Xperia devices so this is something that you have to keep in mind as well um, Xiaomi besides uh, all the critiques that you can get to Xiaomi because of the software and stuff like this they made huge improvements with the Xiaomi 14 series now not only front facing camera main camera uh, sensors there price wise this is, is good if the prices are roughly the same as with the 13 series here globally released then and uh, definitely the operating system has improved in uh, certain key areas there um, I hope that the global version of HypoS will be also pretty cool and more optimized and polished as MIUI ever was for the global version because for the global version in the last couple of years it was basically a disaster. So I hope that they improved there upon this as well. Otherwise, um, yeah, huge steps forward uh, for Xiaomi and uh, kudos to them. They, I think they are on the right way when it comes to uh, capturing the market with um, hyper-focused centric camera devices, but not like Sony is doing it, which is like only for the pros and such things. But this is more for casual users as well. And the devices are compact. They are larger. I think they found their style. You noticed as well that they did not change completely the style of the uh, flagship camera smartphones uh, again. Because before it was like each year, just remember the Mi 11 series and then the 12 series, then the 13 series. Each year it felt like they kicked out the designer and they took someone else in and he redesigned the whole smartphone. This is not the case anymore. They are focusing more on uh, consistency and this is also very, very well welcomed um yeah what do you think about the xiaomi 14 series again write it down in the comment section that's everything for this uh, short little talk video sometimes i do such talk videos if i find something very interesting to talk about like this for example here and uh, by now you should have heard about the xiaomi 14 release already and read some camera specs here and there and uh, some yeah, people's uh, claim that it will be a little bit worse than the predecessor and others are claiming this is the best thing that ever happened to Xiaomi. Yeah, we have to see and I hope uh, to get the devices soon so I have the possibility to also check them out. That's everything. Until the next time, bye.